It's back! And it's better than ever! This is the brand new 2020 Kona Process 134. The Process 134 has been completely redesigned from head to toe, and it's actually Kona's first full carbon fiber process frame in production ever. The 134's front triangle, rocker link, chain stays, and seat stays are all carbon, while the current Process 153's carbon frame uses aluminum chain stays. The frame's suspension travel is, you guessed it, 134 millimeters in the rear, and the frame is designed to be run with a 140 millimeter fork up front. The new 134 has geometry geared perfectly towards aggressive trail riding. The head tube angle sits at a slack 66 degrees, the seat tube angle is at a steep 76.5 degrees, and the chain stays are super short at 427 millimeters. Now when those geometry numbers hit the trail, you've got yourself a bike that's pretty dang capable of doing anything you throw at it. This bike was designed and built for tackling long trail rides where you're going up, down, and all around trails. I've spent several long days now both climbing and descending with this new bike, and let me tell you, this is definitely going to be my new go-to trail bike for any time I've got a long day of earning my turns. The 134 is available in both 29 and 27.5 inch models, and I've been riding the 29 inch version. I would highly recommend the 29 inch model as the rollover abilities you gain with a 29 inch wheel are much better matched with this bike's mid-length suspension travel. The bigger wheels will make this bike super fast both up and down and it'll also help smooth out the trail and make up for not having more suspension travel. Out back, you have more tire clearance than the 153 does, and you can squeeze a 29 by 2.5 inch tire in the rear, whereas the 153 can only fit a 2.3. Also, Kona has designed the seat tube on this frame to have less of an interruption at the kink by the shock so that you can insert a longer dropper post. I'm riding a medium right now, it comes stock with a 150 millimeter RockShox reverb, but I could easily fit a 175 millimeter dropper post in there, which I would definitely be running when I build up one of these bikes for myself. Not only does the 134 have fully internal cable routing, as you would assume, but also it's got tubes inside of the frame so that you literally just slide your housing and cable through and it just slides right out the other side. So it's gonna be super easy to set this bike up. Also for the Europeans and moto riders, there is actually an extra spot on the head tube so that you can run your brakes moto style and still have everything go crisscross across the frame for a super clean look. With a super short chain stays at 427 millimeters combined with a slack head tube angle and 29 inch wheels, this bike is gonna roll super fast into tight corners and tight trails, but since it's so short in the rear end, it's gonna be super nimble and you're gonna be able to snap your way right out of a corner and right into the next section. So I've been riding this bike here for several days. I've got some really long rides on it and I noticed right away the playfulness of the 134 is leaps and bounds above the 153. And that's a lot to say because the 153 is a super nimble bike and that's actually the original reason that we brought Kona into the Lost Co here. So now that the 134 is sharing the spotlight with the 153, you're probably asking yourself, how do these bikes compare to each other? The Process 134 is very, very similar in terms of the geometry numbers when compared to the Process 153, but they're total different beasts and they're gonna be handling a little bit different terrain a little bit better than the other. Think of it as this, the 134 and the 153 are siblings. One is better at baseball, one is better at hockey. They're just naturally better at doing something different. What the hell are you talking about? One really important thing to note about the new 134 is that it's actually more progressive in the rear suspension compared to the 153. So even though you do have less travel in the rear, it's going to feel more bottomless in comparison to the 153. Now I've been on my 153 for a couple months now and if you hit a really big hit or bottom out hard on a huck to flat, you can kind of feel the bottom out. It's a decently linear suspension design. I really like that when you're riding through rough sections. It enables the shock to be super absorbent, suck up small bumps, 
and overall keep the bike feeling super smooth and planted and composed on really rough tracks. However, now since you have less travel with the 134, you're going to feel that bottom out a lot less. And I actually have taken a couple of good huck to flats on the 134 in my time riding it. I have not been able to feel it bottom out. I think that they got the progression on the suspension design pretty much dialed and I wouldn't make it any more progressive or linear. I really like how it turned out. When it comes to climbing, the 134 is definitely a much better climber, hands down, than the 153. Not only is the suspension a little bit more progressive, so it's a little bit more supportive to the whole stroke, and that combined with having less suspension overall is gonna give you a better platform for pedaling uphill. The C-tube angle on the 134, it's a half a degree steeper than the 153. So you're going to be in a better pedaling position compared to the 153. The 134's chain stays are slightly longer than its long-legged big brother at 427 millimeters, so just two millimeters longer than the 153. Since it's shorter travel, a little bit longer chain stay, gonna keep it a little bit more stable so that this bike can handle pretty much any terrain that you throw at it. But most importantly, the Process 134 has 134 millimeters of travel in the rear and uses a 140 millimeter fork up front in stock configuration, whereas the Process 153 has, you guessed it, 153 millimeters of travel in the rear and uses a 160 millimeter fork up front. If you are going to be having one bike to do everything, that's including bike park, long trail days, and some cross country when you need to, I would say that the 153 is probably gonna be the best thing for you. Mainly because bike park is going to eat you alive if you're yeah. having a shorter travel <laughs> bike. So if given the option, I would always go with the longer travel bike. Now take that with a grain of salt because the 134 is a super capable bike. Since it's got very similar geometry, especially the same head tube angle as the 153, the 134 is a super, super versatile bike. It can do pretty much everything you throw at it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it. Right now, I'm gonna think that the 134 is going to be the perfect bike for about 75% of the people who we're catering to. Whereas the last 25% are going to fit better on a 153, and those people are gonna be doing a little bit more bike park or like super gnarly things, and they just want a little bit of extra cushion as a safety blanket in case they mess up a really big hit. Now, if you are a rider doing all mountain riding, and I'm talking about up, down, and all around, the 134 is gonna be a way better bike for you. It's going to go downhill just as well and composed as a 153. Granted, it's gonna have a little bit less travel, so if you're riding way rougher trails, you might get bounced around a little bit, but if you're riding rolling terrain, um, more local trails that don't have huge, giant, chunky rocks, then this bike is gonna do pretty much everything you ask for it. Overall, the bike's super playful, super nimble, super poppy, and it's a really active suspension design that is really geared towards not only being pretty dang stable, but also super, super fun. I'm actually really excited to build one of these things up for myself, put a coil shock on it, and maybe a little bit more burly fork up front. I think that this bike is super capable and I'm really excited to build one of these things up for myself. The carbon fiber model is only available with 29 inch wheels, whereas the aluminum frame is available in both 29 and 27.5 inch. The Process 134 is available in both a carbon and aluminum frame offering, so you can build up a custom bike of your dreams and fit right in your budget. No matter where you are in the world, we can help you out with a custom build and ship a sick custom Kona right to your door. Or if you're local to Bellingham, you can swing in the shop and we can either build you up a custom 134 or 153, or you can buy a complete bike. And there you have it. This is the brand new 2020 Kona Process 134. We've got some time on the trails on these. We're super stoked on how they ride. I can't wait to build one up for myself. I think you guys are gonna have a ton of fun on them and I am super excited to see what kind of custom builds you start throwing our way through our website. If you've got any questions about the new 134 or if you'd like to do a custom bike build with us, give us a call at the shop, 360-306-8827 or you can shoot us an email at info at Until next time, happy trails.